Hi, my name is Amelia. I'm an architect and onboarding specialist here at Finch. In this video, we'll be going over how to create a feasibility study using Finch's algorithms. We'll start off in Rhino, where we will upload a building, and then we'll head into the massing studio, where we can assign programs to get out instant data calculations. After that, we'll jump down into the story to generate a floor plate, followed by heading down into the unit where we can further detail the project. Once we've worked through the project, we can always export down to Revit as a native Revit file where I can continue working with the project there. All right, so here we are in Rhino. I've already modeled all my geometry. Now I simply just need to assign my geometry to the correct Finch layers and hit sync. As soon as I do that, I'm going to see that I've actually received some stories down here in Rhino. And if I head up to Finch, then I can actually see that I have a building here. I have immediately received my key figures over here on the left. And if I would like to further detail the building at this point, I can simply go ahead and select one of these stories, assign to program, I'll make this one retail, and then do this throughout the rest of the building. Once I've done that, I can now see that I have these isolated values over here on the right. So I see my total residential GFA as well as my retail GFA. Next, we're going to hop down into the story to take a look at the generate floor plate algorithm. Finch works with two types of algorithms. You can either draw in your own core and generate around it or generate from scratch where Finch places all the cores for you. In order to start the algorithm, I'll click on the empty area and hit generate floor plate. Immediately, the algorithm begins to run and I receive some data above the result. I can also use the stairwell attractors to control which facade the stairwells generate on. For instance, if I highlight this facade, then I will see that the stairwells will stick to this facade as the algorithm runs. Over on the left, I can control the settings of the algorithm. Up here, I have my unit mix. Right now, I'm requesting sizes of 40, 60, 90 at a ratio of 40, 40, 20. If I want to increase this, I'll simply change the value here and the algorithm will restart. Below that, I have some weights, and the weights are the way that I can prioritize certain metrics and make trade-offs. For instance, right now, I'm telling the algorithm that daylight is very important, however, it could sacrifice a bit on squareness. If I would like to prioritize size, for instance, I could move my daylight down and move the size all the way to the right. Once I found a result that looks good, I can go ahead and hit pause and assign it out. And from here, I can edit the story further using our wide array of editing tools, our smart dimensions, and smart rotation features. In this project, I've already drawn in my core and I would like to generate around it, so I will simply select the areas by holding shift and hit generate floor plate. I can see now that I no longer have my stairwell attractor or stairwell buttons as I already have an existing core. However, the algorithm settings over on the left remain primarily the same. I have the unit mix. I do have a few more weights. Now I see that I have ratio as well as grid lines. So the grid lines are geometry that you can upload from Revit or Rhino. And if I prioritize these all the way to the right, bring the size down and toggle those on, then I'm going to see that the algorithm is actually snapping to those grid lines as it generates. So this can be a good use case if you have quite a strict structural grid that you need to adhere to. Once I have a result that looks good, I can go ahead and pause and assign it out. And from here, I can either continue to edit the floor plate or I can jump down into the unit and begin to work with the plants. In order to work with the new adaptive plan feature, I'll simply select a unit or a group of identical units. Then I will right click and hit find adaptive plan. Immediately, I'm presented with a set of plans. I can either search for specific plans within my library or take a look through the results that Finch suggests. Plans with a green check mark mean that they're a perfect fit. So if I go ahead and click on this, I'll see that I simply can just assign the plan. However, if I have a percentage, such as this plan with a 71%, that percentage is how well the plan will fit into the unit I'm requesting. And here, I can actually take advantage of Finch's smart algorithms and choose to adapt the unit, where Finch will adapt the plan to the unit while maintaining consideration of your constraints and local regulations. In this case, I'll go ahead and work with a plan that's a perfect fit and assign it out. And now I see that the plan has been pasted into all of the identical units, each one rotated to accommodate the corridor and entrances. In order to build up my adaptive plan library, I can draw plans directly in my project and then save them to my library. So if I head into one of these apartments here by hitting edit unit, I can of course customize it, add my own furniture, change the doors, or I can simply just save it to my library as a new plan. 
Once I've added my plan to my adaptive library, I can go into the plan and edit it further. I can use the stretch preview tool to understand how this plan will be stretched when it's turned into an adaptive plan. Here I can see that all of the spaces are expanding and contracting equally. However, if I have quite strict regulations for certain areas, I can actually go in and lock specific modules. To do that, I'll use the constraints tool. In this case, I want to lock the bathroom as well as the hallway, so I'll lock those walls by selecting them. Now, when I stretch the plan, I'm going to see that the other rooms are actually stretching while the bathroom and hallway remain fixed. Once I hit save, now this plan has been added to my library and I can go ahead and search for it as an adaptive plan to populate my project further. So once I've worked with the plan throughout the entire project, then I can go ahead and present it directly inside of Finch, or I can actually export it to external software such as Revit, Rhino, or Grasshopper. In Revit, I'll go ahead and just select the project and variant that I want to download and then simply hit download. Once I have received my project down here into Revit, I can see that I have quite detailed floor plans, complete with families for each wall type, room tags, uh, as well as individual families for the objects. So I can simply convert those to my own templates. I also have received some area plans down here so I can create some custom schedules with those to continue in my work. For more information on how to work with Finch, how it can fit into your workflow, please do check out our user guide, which is linked in the description below.